Canadian gem Shopify beating on the top and bottom lines in the second quarter. Fueled by new signups, price increases, but a heck of a lot more, Carl. So joining us now, first on CBC, Shop Vice President Harley Finkelstein. You know, Harley, I always love when you're on the show. It's good to see you. Hey, Jim. Great to see you as well. Thanks for having me on the show. Okay, I'm good because I know you long enough. I'm going to hit you with left field. I'm not going to come yeah. at you straight away. I'm on this Roku call, right? And Roku's like, like 30%. I'm thinking, what are they doing that is so right? And sure enough, I get to... Uh, to the president of Roku Media. And what is he talking about? He's talking about you. He's talking about what you're doing to make it so that my TV is shoppable. I want people to talk. talk, I want you to talk about this because this is one of the most amazing things going on right now in media. Look, the thing that we pride ourselves on is creating this future-proofed retail operating system. And what that means is that every single one of the merchants and brands and companies, whether they're small brands or they're large brands, you know, Fortune 500 type brands, when they come to Shopify, they can sell across every single surface area where consumers spend their time. So obviously, the online store is the main one. We have a very large point of sale physical retail business. We also want to make it easy for our merchants to sell across Instagram and TikTok and Snapchat and and, and Facebook and also uh, streaming television. Vision. And if we want to qualify to be the leading retail operating system for every modern brand, we have to make it easy for those merchants to sell uh, anywhere where consumers might be. But to, just to be clear, I mean, what you're also seeing, Jim, is that we are laser focused on performance right now. We, we, we're building the best product, the best business, and the best team. And that is now possible because of what you and I talked about the last time I was on your show, which is we've architected a new shape of Shopify. Way more focus on our main quest, better talent density, and we're executing with greater speed. And that's the reason why you're seeing. Uh, uh, for the quarter, revenue was up 31% year on year to $1.7 billion. GMV was up 17% to $55 billion. And we are also earning more parts of our merchants' businesses, delivering uh, our product attach rate over 3%. And we delivered our third consecutive quarter of positive free cash flow. And we expect that positive free cash flow for the third quarter of this year will be greater than the entire first half of 2023. Which is extraordinary. Something else you do this extraordinary that I think people may not realize is you actually have empirical evidence about how well you do with Shopify checkout, which is yeah. as easy as can be. And if I were a consumer product company, which I know love you, we should point that out, yeah. I would be fascinated by how much better you do with your checkout. You've got numbers. Tell us, because they're yeah, incredible. Yeah, so we, I've, been, I've been saying this for a long time, but now we actually have evidence from a third party, a major management consulting firm that put out that Shopify's checkout is unequivocally the best converting checkout on the internet. In fact, it converts 36% better than the competition. And if you look at every checkout on the internet, it converts 15% more on average. So we are building and optimizing our check. We've been doing it now for, for two decades. And that's the reason why folks like Supreme and Taylor Swift can run these massive flash sales on the platform. But the second thing is Shop Pay. And Shop Pay just just surpassed $100 billion in cumulative GMV since the launch in 2017. It is not only the most popular accelerated checkout on Shopify, but it is absolutely the best converting one as well. And we think that this really substantiates that building a modern retail business without Shopify is now a competitive liability. Hey, Harley, there is a, um, there's a thread of thought right now that uh, at least in services and particularly travel, uh, the consumer might be a bit sated here. They, they've had enough. And the, the argument goes that maybe they shift back to good spending. I'm wondering if that's a dynamic you're looking for in uh, the, the last couple of quarters of this year and into next. I mean, we're seeing everything from, you know, uh, bike sales and boat sales up 70 to 80 percent. Swimsuits are up over 50 percent on Shopify. Jungle gyms are up over 100 percent. We're also seeing the Barbie effect. Of course, you know, we are the right. e-commerce partner for Mattel across. But, you know, uh, but but not just for Mattel across the board. We're seeing doll sales up 56 percent, play vehicles up 70 percent. So first and foremost, we we still see that the U.S. consumer is very healthy, very strong. But more importantly, Carl, we are seeing them vote with their wallets to buy from their favorite brands, brands that they have a deep connection to. Direct to consumer uh, is, is what they're looking to do. And all of their favorite brands are on Shopify. The really cool part is now when you add new technology, we talked a bit on the call about Shopify Magic and Sidekick, where we are uniquely positioned to harness the power of AI to unlock these incredible, unprecedented capabilities. We think we can help more companies get started and grow faster than ever before. Well, that's why you got to talk about audiences, because audiences yeah. from small merchants that I've been dealing with are saying, this is what I dream when if I go into Amazon but Amazon is not a partner. Shopify is my partner because of audiences. This is working for people, isn't it? 
It, it is. So, I mean, remember, you know, most people don't refer to Shopify in this way, but if you were to pretend that Shopify was a single retailer, if you were to aggregate all of our merchants, let's just say in the U.S., for example, we would be the second largest online retailer in America. What that means is that we have incredible economies of scale. So when we go to negotiate rates on things like payments, for example, we're negotiating as if we're the second largest online retailer, and then we're able to provide those economies of scale to small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and even larger companies like the Glossiers and Mattels and the Spanx of the world who use Shopify. But audiences is really interesting because what it allows us to do is help merchants on Shopify buy ads more effectively. We had Shopify editions come out last week where we announced 100 new products and features that we've been building. And one of those announcements was we call Audiences 2.0, which is our new algorithm, which helps merchants yeah. get return on ad spend up to almost 50% with uh, above what they would be able to do on their own. So once again, we're trying to make the, the process of starting businesses easier. But once you get started, every aspect of your business, we want to take care of it and make it better for you. And uh, and, and we are we are cooking with gas right now. We're, we're firing off cylinders. All right. So people listen to, to, they're listening to Harley at home and they obviously are, are fired up and you were fired up from your call and then we get to a guy who can't resist and he says well what do you have conversations with amazon does it ever just get you down <laughs> that there's someone who has to ask that question harley no, I, I, I don't. I don't mind that question. I mean, like, like I said, uh, we, we are talking to Amazon, uh, and, and, and frankly, conversations remain productive. But there's no news yet to share on that. Well, I don't think there should be. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> That's up. I like. I, we all love Amazon, but Harley is Mister Small Business Person, and there's nothing better than that. Even though he's got some great consumer product companies, the big one.